Hi, this is Jen with Unchained Crochet. If you haven't done it yet, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to see more items and tutorials like this. Okay, so today while in a chat, I started um, just crocheting and designing something that I've had in my head for a while. Um, this is somewhat of a tutorial, somewhat of a laboratory experiment. <laughs> so if you want to come along for the crazy ride, be my guest, but I have not finished this project. This is at the um, stage one. <laughs> I have not even drawn a picture of this out. So if you want to come along, come along. If you want to wait and see what it ends up like, um, wait before you make it. Um, I'm just going to tell you my thought process as I am going. Okay, so I got quite a bit done during the live. I got a lot of increases done. Uh, the yarn that I am using is Yarn Bee Sweet Divinity Berry Purple. And this top I'm going to call the Orchid Baby Doll. Uh, because it is right now, I have folded it up. I'm thinking about body ratios. Um, and uh, when I started and I, I was in chat, I, I let them know <laughs> I was on a Have a Yarn with Charlie's chat tonight. And uh, we were talking about different things we were doing and um, let everybody know what I was uh, working toward was making a baby doll top with a sweetheart neckline in the front. So the easy way out for me um, to avoid complicated math is either think in body ratios, even simple things, um, or make the yoke the way I want it and then attach fabric for the sleeves and the body of it to, to just be done with it quick and have a cute little top. I had a baby doll, um, sweetheart, like top. Let me draw you a picture real quick. I had a couple of them that I had bought at Walmart, believe it of all places, a few years back. And they were just so cute. And it had like this little, and I have a couple now that have like, the ones I have now, they're kind of that silky rayon blend, and it's kind of got some uh, beaded jewelry look to it right there, and then it has gathered fabric, and then the sleeves kind of flare out a bit, and so does the bottom, and so and it has a little bit of a shape like that uh, to it. I should round the neck up a little bit more. So it actually goes up like that a little bit more. So this is as fancy as I get with my drawings, okay? Um, I could do it in detail if I wanted to, but um, I could say I'm not a fashion designer, but I am. I just, crochet, you know, design my own fashion crochet. So with that shape kind of in mind, and the tops I used to have were similar, but they were a t-shirt knit fabric and, and that microfiber fabric that we see so much of in the... Um, fashion industry especially fast fashion they use that a lot fast fashion is uh there's a video about fast fashion I, I don't know i'm not sure if it goes by that name on youtube still or not but there was a documentary that i watched might have been on netflix uh several years ago they talked about the fashion industry and how um you know different companies in uh, foreign countries put in bids to make t-shirts and different wearable garments and shoes things like that with American-owned companies and to sell them in America. So they'll put in a bid and, and outbid each other. And, you know, before you know it, they're making a, a T-shirt for a dollar or two. And a lot of the factories, like in India, I think was one, they had a factory. It was like a sweatshop. It collapsed. And they showed people there with signs, you know, loved ones being looked for in the rubble. So this is one thing I like about crochet, um, crocheting my own garments. And I have... I'll put a picture here um, right now, and you can see my wall of my crochet garments that I wear. I wear one almost every day now because I've done so many things for myself. I used to just uh, mainly make crocheted stuff for other people, and um, then I started really branching into design for myself. Um, I like the thought process. Um, I like the math to the extent. Um, I don't like 
tedious math. Um, I like the aspects of going by ratios. Okay, so um, the t-shirts that I had were basically shaped like that, um, but they had like t-shirt down here instead of a spandexy like uh, lycra or whatever they call it fabric. It wasn't slinky and, um, you know, a little, little area that was gathered more like this down here. And then the sleeves weren't as gathered. Okay. So this is similar to what I'm going for. I don't want a real low neckline and, um, I don't want a real obvious, you know, this is this, piece right here. I don't want an obvious look to it, you know. So what I plan to do, um, a circular neckline won't work. And here, here's why, for what I want. A circ circular yoke made in the round, you make the front and the back at the same time. And you have nice, even, even increases, you know all the way around and then you get to you know where you got enough on there for your sleeves and your body and you split it up i've made those for my granddaughter um one for my granddaughter and i think one for somebody else before and i did make a round yoke cardi for myself and had it asymmetrical opening to it uh several years ago that was crocheted it was um some upcycled red cotton yarn from uh i think a goodwill sweater or something and everybody would comment how cute it was on me i just eyeballed it so the problem is, is that I like doing these tutorials and I want something that other people can replicate without doing a bunch of pattern ge generation um, with software. I don't use software. I don't want to be on the computer so much. I want to feel it in my hands, see it in my mind and create it right there in my fingers. So um, that also can entail a lot of frogging. And, um, you know, we don't enjoy frogging, but... As you think through your designs, you can feel when something's not going to work out, okay? So um, where I'm at right now with this, I'll show you how it's folded up. And this is my thought process. When I was in chat, the piece was about this big. Right now it's folded up and all the ruffles are, um, you know, laid flat like a little saucer, like a little breakfast plate, okay? Um, it is uh, symmetrical. But, um, you know, when I was in chat, it was about this big, and I said it's almost as big as my Tata. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking, you know. If if you decide you want to make this, that would be my recommendation. I'm not going to write up a hard pattern for it. Um, my hope for everyone is that you branch out, um, get brave, and um, learn some new skills, learn body ratios, um, learn to create for yourself, and the pleasure of designing your own items. Um, so this tutorial is to help you build your skill set. Um, and it is a very, and I'm saying very loose tutorial. If you're not brave enough or you don't have enough experience, you might want to wait by the sidelines, um, until you build up some more skills. That's just my thoughts on that. So this is, um, folded in half and then folded in half again. And I'm calling her orchid baby doll because it kind of is taking the shape of an orchid right now when it's folded up. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks kind of like an orchid. You can do it like this, it can look more like a rose, <laughs> violet rose. So um, I'm just kind of trying to see, gauge how, how much material, because when you crochet, you're not just making stitches, you're making a fabric, you're making material. And um, it's important to recognize that. When you are increasing, you're, you are increasing and creating more and more fabric. So where is that fabric going to go? How is it going to fall? How is it going to lay on you? What's the drape going to be like? Um, what style of increases um, do you like? Do you like a lacy increase? Because this has a lacy increase. I did just a fillet row every other row. Okay, This last row is fillet. Um, I, I believe I am done increasing. For now, at least, I think that. Um, so this has a fillet row. I wanted it to be a little bit peekaboo. I plan on wearing a tank top under it, as I do most of my um, lower neckline tops. This is not super low neckline. Um, you know, I have enough problems making sure my cleavage doesn't don't, don't show. 
does it show every time I bend over the grocery store to put something on the bottom of the cart? You know, that kind of thing. I, I don't say I don't, I don't want to like put anybody down. If you like showing a little bit of cleavage, so be it. That's you, that's your style. And you could design yours that way if that's how you want to do it. Um, I don't like um, rule the rules and uh, pattern constriction to where you've got a certain stitch count you have to have and this and that and this and that. I don't like that. Um, now a stitch pattern repeat, yes. If you're doing several stitches, you need numbers to work with, hard numbers. Um, at least some for the repeat of a stitch pattern repeat, you need to know uh, parameters to stay within to maintain your stitch pattern. Um, but this has no stitch pattern to it other than every other row is fillet. Okay? I started with an odd number for that reason. I think I started with 11 uh, stitches. Uh, so give me just a second. I'm going to pause and get a drink and vape a little bit, and I'll come back and let you know um, how I started this. Okay, so I hope you understand right now that there's not going to be a part one, part two, part three of this. There's going to be parts to it as this grows, and I'm going to show the progress. Um, but I'm not going to stop and tell you every step of the way what to do and when. I'm just giving you a generalized guideline of how I'm doing my figuring for my figure. I'm a plus size girl. I'm bigger chested. I have big arms, so I like that ease of fit so that's why I went for the baby doll style top and I want a sweetheart neckline that kind of you know is that oval shape um, I don't want it rounded I want it more like this a little plunging but I don't want a bunch of cleavage or booby butt showing um, I don't know if those are words allowed on YouTube but you get my drift and I want some flounce to it right here I want that right now I'm feeling like um, you're you're basically getting a glimpse into a designers mind that's what I'm showing you um, you may never see this top finished I'm not even gonna promise that <laughs> it may be a fail and if it is I'll frog it because I love this yarn that much um, this yarn let's look at the ball band again and people want to know how much yarn do I need, how much yarn do I I don't know. It depends on your size. I know what I use. Um, I can tell you, not yardage, but how many skeins of something I use or about such and such. So make sure you get enough to yarn that you would normally, um, you know, use for a top. If you've not done a top before, this may not be a good first project for you since it is not even really a complete tutorial. This is more of a tutorial on open up your mind, expand your thinking um, kind of deal. So expand your thinking and um, maybe before long you'll decide to, hey, I'm going to just try this and wing it and, and do my thing. So um, it started out having a crescent shape, I will tell you that. Uh, this is, it's way in there. Yarn Be Sweet Divinity is 243 yards, and I believe I have six balls of this, six skeins, whatever you want to call it. Um, 222 meters. It's 80% acrylic, 20% nylon. So, um, and I can tell you right now, it is soft enough. You don't need to really kill it with the steam. You could probably just throw it in the wash. I usually use a steam iron and kill my acrylics. Um, it calls for a size 7 knitting needle, but guess what? Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Four and a half millimeter. I have my H hook. That's what I'm using. I think it's a five millimeter or five and a half. I'm not sure because I've, I've done my little pretty uh, ergonomic handle on it. Um, let me see if I have another H hook. I can tell you what size hook I'm using at least. <laughs> Okay, here's one I haven't put my ma magic marker on, my permanent marker on. It is a five millimeter hook. And this is a knitting needle size. So it calls for one size millimeter higher for a crochet hook. It would be a an eye hook, I think. Let me grab my eye hook. It would be five and a half millimeter, I think. So it calls for an eye hook. 
I'm using an H. I stitch pretty loosely. I'm a very relaxed stitcher. Oops, sorry. And I don't hold much tension on my yarn at all. Um, so, right now, if you unfold this, it looks kind of like a big cabbage leaf. Um, and it's kind of, I folded it in half and folded it in half again. So, where I started, get this extra yarn out of the way. You can see, like, it's overlapping itself, obviously, okay? But my thought is, is to take these here and make this more the shoulder area and open it up like this. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me see if I can... I'm going to pause this. Okay, so I have moved the camera up a bit, but... And I'll show this um, against my chest on another video. Um, I may have gone a little far with my increasing. I'm not sure yet. It feels like I have a lot, a lot of fabric here. But also, you need that coverage because some of this is going to go into the body of the piece. Okay, so you need that those stitches. It's just a matter of getting them where you want them to be. So I may back out this last row that has um, an increase row with the fillet. I may back that one out and not do those that increase row. Um, if I frog, I'm going to try to take you with me and tell you if I frogged a row. <laughs> so we'll try not to make this one too long. So here is where I've started. And like I said, I started with 11 stitches. So I started with chaining uh, three, and then I did 10 double crochet into that first chain, into the first chain. So that made 11 with the chain two that was left from the chain three, and then went around and did 10 more. So I had 11. Then the next row, um, the next row, I just did a regular increase row. And when I did my increases, from the second row on, every row, this second row included, on the beginning and the end of the, the stitching of that row, I did a treble or a chain four to count as... A treble and chain one since this is a fillet row so I started the second row with a chain four three to count as my treble and one chain to count as my chain one and then I double crocheted into the same stitch I was right above so that added this height here you're basically when you're increasing you are steering your fabric that's what I learned from that's that was big takeaway with knitting for me was that when you are increasing or decreasing you are steering the fabric uh, so being at your ship's wheel <laughs> you're in charge of where your fabric goes how it, how you want it to lay it kind of has kind of has a doily effect right now those ruffle ones that used to stand up back in the day my um, former mother-in-law that passed away she had told me that they used to sugar their doilies to get them to stand up all pretty and roughly okay um i think as this goes on it's not going to be as roughly as you get more fabric and keep going out in a circle if you're not increasing you're not going to maintain that circle so it might just calm it down just a bit it might look a little bit puffed right there a little bit flared but it is going to calm it down some whether i take that last increase row out or not so you could easily make this a halter top um, just by adding some strings to the top and uh, tie it behind your neck and then just take some of this and then add, add a back section you know, if you're a smaller person, you like wearing halter tops, um, you can make it into a halter pretty easily. Um, and also, as this comes down to be the body, it's going to square it off some at the corners. So I don't want it to be a forced thing where I'm forcing another shape. I want it to be gradual. So I am probably going to add 
some corners of treble crochet to double to half double, you know, or just a double. Maybe a double treble, a treble, a few trebles, you know, around a corner so that this gets our bottom portion where I'll keep working down for the front of the top and then sleeve portion where I keep working out for the sleeves. So um, that is it so far. And I've done that fillet increase row every other row. Every row, though, after the second one, including the ones that are solid rows, I have ended with a treble crochet, a double and a treble into that last stitch or the top of the turning chain. So the treble was to gain that height faster. Um, when you do a taller stitch, you're going to climb higher faster. It's like taking bigger steps. I'm going to pause again real quick. So when I pull this straight right here, see if you can see it. I need a new uh, tripod that stands on its own, not on my desk. When I pull this straighter here, you can see what it does to the fabric. It looks kind of like a bib. This would be a really cute bib, by the way. <laughs> for, for like a little girl, it would be really cute. So it may be that it's curving just a bit much for me. I don't want it to look like a v-neck. Let me get these yarns out of the way here so you can concentrate. Let me put this paper behind here. I know it's got my notes on it, but then you'll have some contrast instead of the desk behind it so much on the nickel. Um, it looks more like a child's neck right there. So opened up, you can see it looks very much like a, a plunging neckline. To me it does. And when I hold this up to my shoulders, um, it falls, this lands, the bottom of it lands um, right near the, the tip of my bust line, the biggest part of my bust line. So that, that is where I want that to land. So the depth I like, um, but it may, again, it may be a bit too much fabric. I am going to count my stitches to see where they're at right now. And that's because I want to know that I am to the point where I can separate this soon after I get my corners made and maybe do two rounds with nothing but corner increases. No increasing around the whole thing. Just corner increases. Do a couple, maybe two to three, I said rounds, two to three rows with just corner increases. Make some corners here and then keep it going out to spread the fabric out some to grow it some more wider, deeper, so that then I, I have come to a point where it's more um, a gently rounded, thingamabob <laughs> fancy names I use with a little bit of corner to them see where my thumbs and my fingers are at you know where that that will make more of a yoke and I'll be able to divide up sleeve fabric from body fabric that way and this extra fabric um, I'm thinking probably this was my thought when I folded it um, because I know that your arms are about um, 40 to 50 percent the size of your um, bust measurement at the peak line of your bust. If you go back and watch my body ratio video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Hold on just a second. I'm going to pause again. Okay. Um, because I know that, I don't know if I'm even starting off where I left off at when I paused. <laughs> I had to turn the heat down too. I'm getting really hot up in here. So, because I know that I, I need that body. I need, I need the fabric. If you're a smaller person, yours doesn't need to be as big here. When I had it that size and it was starting to curl, I let the ladies know I got it. I got the world's biggest pasty. <laughs> so when it started really ruffling was out around here. Okay, because I was aggressively, that's a good term for it, aggressively increasing. Every other row, I was doubling, almost doubling the stitches. So keep that in mind. If you're a smaller gal, um, you see it about the size of your ta-ta, okay? Um, keep that in mind, you know, with your ratio. 
Uh, you're not as big. You may not want the sleeves as full or as long. So you might want to just scale back the in increases a bit. Maybe do the fillet row every, um, instead of every other, do it every third or every fourth row to slow down your increases. Okay, otherwise, and maybe not start with 11 stitches. Maybe if you're smaller, start with 7 stitches. I suggest an odd number. Um, odd numbers just always seem to work out well for me uh, when working back and forth like this. So that that's just my suggestion. Um, and I'm really excited, even though this, I don't even know if this is going to work, you guys. <laughs> Gals, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just really excited to share this experiment with you um, as my design experiment for the week. Um, I want to keep going with this. I really do. Um, so back to the ratios. All right. Because I know the arms, um, my arms are big arms. And um, I like that room. I don't like things really snug against them. Um, and I don't want the arms to be out of proportion much from the flare that the body is going to have. Um, I want the body and the arms kind of equally uh, spread out, so to speak. So I don't want to go like this and say, well, here's my arm. I don't want to do that. Um, I want to say, approach it this way. That's why I had it folded. I'm trying to size it up and break it up without counting. All right. Kind of have a little bit of a nautilus shape if you do it in half like that. So do it corner corner to corner. It's kind of like a Frito Lace potato chip or a cabbage leaf like this. Um, start smoothing it out. You get it corner to corner. Lay it out a little bit. You don't have to make sure everything is totally flat at this point. Just kind of find your, your middle. All right. Fold it in half again. Look for where you started. Here's where I started right there. There's where I started right there. So then I went and did this to it and flattened it out. Okay. So this is how I'm approaching this. And I'm going to remember that folded up into four, it was the size of my breast, one breast, <laughs> about, about that, okay, so little orchid here um, is folded in four, and if I look at this in proportion, all right, I'm thinking body should be maybe, maybe this much, like half of it, and then the other half for my two sleeves. Okay. I don't even know if this is going to work out. So half of this would just be right here. <laughs> Remember back in the day when you used to get the record players? Here. Here's half. This, this would be body. Right about here. And the rest of this is sleeve fabric. So I will be counting my stitches, though, um, just because it's so roughly. But it seems to me that the body is right down here, the lower half of this little fan shape right there, and on down. And the sleeves are up there. Remember back in the day when we used to check out um, records from the library? I loved going to the library when I was a little kid. I loved it. We had a, a little truck that came around. Um, and it was just a little truck, like a trailer on the back of a truck. I don't even remember exactly the construction of this truck, but it was the library mobile. And when I was about seven or eight, I got to be able to ride my bike. And back then, we could ride our bike around town safely as children, uh, fairly safely. Um, Adam Walsh thing had happened um, in the 80s, but um, I felt safe in my town for the most part. It was a neighbor that kind of was the 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 perv, the stalker of our neighborhood, but we stayed together. We stuck together. We used the buddy system and we would ride down to the drugstore, a place called Fairco, get a bag of candy for five cents a piece, you know, nickel candy and come home holding our bag against the handles of our bikes, you know, so happy and free and hair, you know, blowing in the wind, hair blowing in the wind, chasing each other, 
stopping and eating our candy, stopping at the library on the way home. You know, I had a little library card my mom had gotten me. And I loved going into the children's book section and smelling the old books. And then that bookmobile, when it would come around, you could turn your books in, too, that you had checked out. It was so awesome. I wish they would go back to that. Um, so it came around the neighborhood, and they would stop and on our block, and we would all run up there and check out books from the bookmobile. They had some on the bookmobile. And anyway, back in the, that day in the 80s, we could still rent records or check out records from the library. And um, if you left them in your car, it got all wavy. <laughs> That's what this reminds me of. That's what got me on the topic of the library. And I still love going to the library. So, um, yeah, if you rent your record and left it in the car, <laughs> it ended up looking like this. Um, then you had to pay for it. So, um Anyways, I am so excited to share this project with you guys, this, ex this experiment. I've never made a baby doll shaped top, never done a sweetheart neckline. Um, so this is definitely experimental. Um, you are winging this on your own should you decide to follow along <laughs> at this point. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this is my disclaimer. I cannot be held responsible should your top not fit or should your top look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to let you into my, my little bit of my designing mind. Um, and I know that we all have a free bird within us and I want you to be a free bird and feel like you can do anything with your crochet and you can, you really can. Um, you know, it can be whatever, just like Bob Ross says, it can be whatever you want it to be. Happy little trees. So I want you to be happy little birds and free birds. So this is it so far. It kind of has a renaissance type feel to it to me. The purple. Um, royalty wore purple a lot back in the, that day. And then the ruffle uh, to it really has a renaissance feel. But again, I, I may go ahead and take out that last row um, because that did, it, it, it will be even bulkier as I keep going. Um, it takes a while. If you're stitching something in the round like a hat, you'll know this. You do all your increases um, and, and it looks like it's going to fit that person's head, so you stop increasing. But it takes a while for it to cup around there. Um, it takes a while for it to make that turn around the head, and so it will come out a little bit more, and then you end up with too big of a hat up at the top, you know, up at the top of the person's head, and then it gets real small you know, toward the, where the, it should be fitting their head. It gets smaller there. So you end up with all this extra bulk up at the top of the hat. You know, it's because if you increase until you no longer need increases visually at that moment, it ends up um, taking a while for that increased look to stop. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Um, if you've done a hat before and tried to make up a hat on your own, you may have run into that and understand what I'm talking about. If not, just disregard. So, um, y'all can have a good laugh with me if this doesn't work out, but I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it work out somehow, some way. At this point, I could literally put this, I could put some fabric behind it, um, gather it, stitch it onto the back of this ruffle right around here, and um, it would be a flouncy top with a crocheted yoke so there is um help for this no matter if i end up crocheting the whole thing or not um i will make it work out somehow um so i'm excited i hope that you enjoyed this video and that you check back often for updates it will be in its own playlist it is the orchid baby doll This is how you count when you have gobs and gobs of stitches and you have no idea how many. You just know you got a gob, all right? Hob gob number of stitches here that have been stitched. I am marking every hundred stitches. I'm counting the chain ones as a stitch, so I'm counting by twos. And I want you to see how you can count a little faster. I'm counting fillet. You could go every other stitch and count by twos if you have solid a solid row. But this is how I'm counting them, all right? I just did 100. That space there is 100. So I'm going to start all over again, counting to 100 or wherever I end up. And if it's not 100, by the time I get down to there, I'm going to uh, make a little 
um, I'm going to punch an index card with the hole and write how many remaining stitches I have left between the last marker here and the end. Okay, so you can watch me count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, thirty. Two, four, six, eight, forty. Two, four, six, eight, fifty. Two, four, six, eight, sixty. Two, four, six, eight, seventy. Two, four, six, eight, eighty. Two, four, six, eight, ninety. Two, four, six, eight, one hundred. So that chain one space is one hundred. I'm marking that. So now I have our remaining two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. I have 12 more stitches there. Look at the edge here. I told you how I did it in each edge stitch. There is a double crochet toward the inside and a treble crochet toward the outside or a chain uh, three that counts as a treble. Did I say double crochet here? Double toward the inside, treble toward the outside. Okay, so I have 12 remaining. So I've counted all the way around. There's a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred and twelve stitches. Woo doggies, that's a lot of stitches. <laughs> I'm a big girl though, I really am, and I want this to have a nice flair to it. I just think that 512 stitches, we're just going to make this my, see what notes I have on here. Oh, that was notes for my last thank you episode. Um, we're just going to count this as 512 stitches for now. This is my project journal. <laughs> it's going to be in the bag with it. Um, I, I have a nice project journal book I got from Hobby Lobby. Really cute. It ins all it did was inspire me. I have one project, I think, that I wrote down in there that I started. And I don't remember which one it is. But um, I'm not going to use the thing. I might just tear that page out and uh, give it away to somebody with my next um, drawing for a handmade shawl. Um, so uh, I just I don't use them because it's all... My projects are all spread out. Why would I keep a project journal that I have to go grab every time I grab one project? So I want my notes with my project. So it's going to be in this bag. I've got my color-coded bag. This is pink for spring. So I know that I'm allowed to touch this project right now. It's hanging on my project wall on my pegboard. So I picked it up tonight and decided I was going to try this yarn out with a different project. I was doing a, a different one Um a pattern that's not my own that I've made and wore on my show a couple times now that I like. It's called Starry Night. Um, highly recommend that that pattern, but um, just wasn't feeling it for this particular yarn. Um, I think that that Starry Night pattern is better with either a variegated, highly variegated, or um, a mandala type yarn. So, um, This is Iris Baby Doll. I might just call it Iris Baby. I don't know. <laughs> How I know? Or Orchid. Orchid. Orchid Baby. Orchid Baby. Because it is. it looks like an orchid. Um, and I love the purple. I like the, um, I'm not sure how well you can see the um, kettle dye look that the yarn has. Um, in person it shows a lot, lot better. So there's some more plum areas and more violet sections so um it really looks like it was kettle dyed i really really like this yarn so 512 stitches if i take half of that let's just do a little math real quick okay and i'm counting my chain ones as a stitch because they are they're the width of a stitch so um let me grab my tape measure 
And I'm just getting general numbers. I'm not going to be sure this fits my bust exactly so. Um, I know in the end what I want it to look like. My thing is not locking. I think it used to lock. Okay, well, it doesn't lock anymore. Um, this, after washing, it's going to stretch just a bit. So I'm just trying to see about how many stitches I'm getting to the inch. And I'm looking at the top of that row. I'm getting about four to four and a half stitches per inch. So um, let's go with the with the the lower number, the four, just to make it an even number. Four stitches to the inch. Let's do some math. Okay, here four. Stitches equals one inch, and I've got five hundred and twelve. I need my, I need my calculator for this. Four stitches in one inch, and I've got five hundred and twelve stitches. So, um, we want to know how many inches this five hundred and twelve is in total. We need to divide this by four, I believe. It's late. I'm, I'm, it's really, really late. <laughs> so we'll divide this by four. And I get, dang, it is too late to be doing this, 128 inches. My sleeves for my kimono cardies, uh, my my one I did with the uh, Lion Brand, I think it's Teacup Street Lights or something like that, that colorway. It's the video I have where I have a yellow um, turquoise and gray kimono on. It's got really big sleeves. It's really boxy. Um, that sleeve is at least 30 inches around, if not bigger. Okay, so I know... Um, that's about, if, if I make my sleeve on this 38, cause I'm just deciding right now, you know, do I want this much fabric? First of all, it's a question. Do I want this much fabric? 512 stitches is a lot of fabric. Um, and this is just the half of the sleeve of each sleeve, half of each sleeve and half of the body. So the front, it's just the front of the sweater. Of the top. I'm just calling it a sweater, but it's a top. It's just half. Just this front piece. It doesn't include the back. None of these stitches I have stitched so far are going into the back of the piece. That's going to be probably a whole other design because I don't want a plunging neckline. I'm not going to do two of the same pieces on this one. My kimono tops, I usually have a mirror image either... Uh, two sides that are sewn together like that sewn together in the back and the front so and then I'll, I might make that the sleeves and then pick up and stitch down a kimono top is like that for me two two rectangles and then pick up all the way around the front and the back and stitch down this one is not like that all I'm doing right now is the front so what I've got done so far would represent not even that far down, but like this portion right up here. So let me get you a little closer. Hold on, I'm going to pause. <laughs> if anyone wants a, um, a desktop uh, gooseneck, uh, I may uh, give that to one of the shawl winners. <laughs> <laughs> As I reach my goals of uh, subscribers, I'm giving away my hand knit shawls and... Um, uh, I'm planning on getting one that's freestanding. Uh, this one's harder for me to adjust, and I do a lot of tutorials. So if you maybe want to do some close-up shots and be hands-free, um, but don't do long tutorials, this gooseneck might work well for you. Uh, so what, where I was at was this purple piece I've made so far is about right here. Okay. Now it is skinnier 
right here at the edges. Let's look at it again. See there? But we also, your sleeves are not going to be as long as the pieces down the front of the body. So it may be somewhat proportionate. Okay. Um, I think I want about 10 inches wide for my opening. I don't want my bra strap showing easily. Okay. So that's where it should fall on my shoulders. Um, I'll try not to keep this going too long for you. You can always uh, fast forward or not watch at all if it bothers you watching me go through my <laughs> my my mental torture of figuring this out. This is a puzzle for me. It really is. It's a challenge. I like it. So four stitches to the inch, 512 stitches. I've got 128 inches long of fabric from one point of this crescent to the other point. What am I going to, where am I going to position that on the top uh, right here? Okay. So this being as deep as my bust line. Okay. I'm going to need to square this up right, right around here and here to reach to, to get to the armpit area. Uh, it's not going to be right under my arms. It's going to be a little flouncier. So the arm might come down more like that. Okay. Um, so now I've got to figure out 128 inches and how much of that I want to go where. Okay. This is pretty proportionate. Um, no matter what size you are, this is pretty proportionate here. Um, so this here. Um, and there and there, I would, I would say I'm safe with almost half of it, that fabric here. So half of 128 would be 64. That is 64 inches across here. Okay. That's just one side of the top. Now the back's not going to be like that. The back, I think I am going to make it, I'm going to have to visually, um, improvise. Um, and determine this more once I get out here. Um, another option would be, this would be really, really cute, is to have a fabric back, a stitched front, and then take and make a fabric belt to go around here. Once this fabric stops being so ruffly and, you know, it's draping nicely, make a fabric belt that matches your back. I think that would be very, very cute. In fact, you're walking towards someone and you're wearing this little cute crochet top and then boom, you turn around, you pick something up and your whole back is just this lovely fabric that coordinates with the front and you've got a belt that matches and coming around to the front and is tied right here, tied in a knot. That, that would be really cute. So just a thought, just an idea, throwing it out there to myself, me, myself, and I right now. But 64 inches, if I took half of that of those stitches and put them there, it would be 64 inches. So that's rather large. Um, typically when you make a ruffle, uh, when you're working with fabric, say I was making some curtains, uh, your curtains, you would double the width of your fabric. Say I've got uh, a piece of fabric I'm making for the, the, ta the curtain rod, the rod pocket right here. And I want to make this curtain, but I don't want a straight panel. I want ruffles in it. This here, you're going to cut a piece double for that curtain. And I want it to have that curtainy effect. So how much fabric do I want for this front? That's the question. Um, so if I want it very roughly, very roughly, okay, I don't want it sticking to my body anywhere. Um, 
but I don't want it poofing out a whole lot on my bust. I don't want to come walking towards somebody and here, boom, boom, here's some boobs and here's a big ruffle. I don't want that either. I don't want people to see nothing but ruffle up there. That will quiet down some as we keep stitching. Sorry, I probably need to tone it down a bit. My room is very echoey. So back to the curtain. If you're making a curtain and you got a rod pocket and you don't want a straight panel here, you want those nice country curtains that used to be real popular in the 80s. You would keep going um, with the width of your fabric and you would make this width double run a basting stitch and pull a thread or um, you would use a ruffler foot um, and then that would then once it's ruffled would fit on the half width of the top of your curtain pocket rod um, rod pocket the rod pocket so um, that is how you get a nice ruffle if you, depending on how roughly you want it. Do I want a country curtain look on my top? I don't think so. So were I to back out this last row I've done where I did another double crochet, chain one, every stitch. Double crochet, chain one. I went into every stitch and put, put a chain between them. All right, just to keep it simple. That's basically what I did. Went into every stitch and put a chain between them. If I back that out, I'm going to have about half of that 512, which would be 226. Is that right? No. It's late. Let me do it long, long, long math. <laughs> ah. Two goes into 11. Okay, five times. 256. Then I have 12 left. And that goes in six times. So if I back out this last row, I'm going to have 256 stitches. So doing the math again, divided by four. And this is just approximate. Um, because it's somewhere between four and four and a half, I think. Um, and after it's washed, I feel like it's going to have a little bit more drape. So, and the smaller number you have per inch, the bigger your gauge. The higher number you have per inch, the smaller your gauge. So, um, it's kind of opposite of what you think it would be. So, 25 divided by four. Let's work this out. I wish I had some people on here in chat that could help me with the math with their calculators right now. It's one, it's about 140 in the morning and I'm still sipping on my coffee. <laughs> oh goodness, goodness gracious. Four goes into 24 six times. So that, that comes out to a multiple of four as well. So then we have the 64. We're back to the number 64 inches, see? Because we divided that by four before. So 64 inches. If I take that last row out, that's what I would have. Now, that number seems a lot more reasonable to me. This 256 for the front seems very reasonable to me. It feels like I could really work with that number for some reason. And I believe 64 is the number of amino acids there are that they have logged 64 different amino acids that make up the human body um, for our DNA, like combinations, something like that. And it's also 8 times 8. So, okay, 256. We're just going to forget that number for now, but this would be our choices. We can stick with the 512 or we can go down to 256, thereabouts, okay? If it's off by a couple stitches, I don't care. I really don't care because I'm going to visually divide this up. I'm not even going to, I probably won't even, I might count the sleeve stitches just so I know which are going to go toward the sleeves and which are going to go to, toward the body, okay? 
I just want to count the sleeves and whatever falls to the body falls to the body. I don't care. All right. But the 64 inches, whereas I did have 64 inches just for the bust area. Well, I was thinking if I did half of those stitches down there, I now have 64 inches all the way around here. If I take out this last row that I did. If you're sticking with me so far through this, kudos to you. You really want to design your own stuff. And you really want to go along with this crazy train idea of mine right here. So, kudos. All right. Now, taking the 64, um, you could divide that in half and put half toward the sleeves. I'm just making it rectangular because I'm going to square this up just a little bit so I know where my corners are. And you can see where your corners are and which stitches go to which part of the body. Body or sleeves, okay? Um, so taking that, 64 inches, half of that would be 32. That's a good number for me. Hmm. Because that, when I make the back the same width or thereabouts, I would have 64 for my bust or all the way down. Because you're, there's no, you don't have to increase. But if you find out later, you get down there and you need some increase for your hips, say you're wider hipped. You're more uh, pear shaped. Uh, go up a size in your needle, and then go up another size in your needle, your hook, if you need to. Sorry, I call them needles too. I sew and knit and crochet, so everything's a needle. If it's skinny, it's a stick or a needle. Um, so then that would leave us with 32 inches for the sleeves. So 16 over here, 16 over here. And then when I go and do the back, that's going to put my circumference of my sleeves, which I like the kimono style, but it is going to have a roughly look to it. So I think it's going to drape down like this a little bit, a little angel sleeve and hippie-ish. Ooh, goodness. I just thought of something, y'all. I got to get it. I'm going to pause real quick. When I said it would give it a hippie-ish feel, those flower child tops back in the 60s oh my goodness i had to think of my joplin headscarf i probably will do a tutorial on this for y'all too i know some of y'all have mentioned uh are you going to teach us to quilt too that was one of the comments i got last night um eventually i am going to have some cross crafting uh, right now i'm kind of sticking with the crochet and some sew crow items to show off to uh not show off, but to show and tell and to um, expand your creativity, your thinking. Everything doesn't have to be all crochet or all sewn. You can do sew crow. So this was my headband that I, I showed in another video, and it holds my eyeglasses. Anytime I have this headband on, I can have my eyeglasses with me hanging right there. It's awesome, especially if I'm heavy in a design mode you know i've got my readers with me and i can count easily i can stitch easily and not be blurry eyed so the, my little socro headband my little joplin scarf looks great with <laughs> with the um orchid baby doll so i think that looks really cute together i don't know what y'all think but i love it love it love it love it love it just gonna say that all right so back to our issue at hand. All right, back on track. Sorry, squirrel. Right, Granny D? <laughs> squirrel. Um, these numbers work great, work great for me. The 16, the 32, the 16. I'm happy with that. Um, it will be rather, and my sleeves are not going to be really long. Um, I want them... Uh, the top of the sleeve as my arms are down. I don't really want it to come uh, all the way to my elbows. Maybe maybe just to the top of my elbow area. And this part here would then hang down um, very loosely. So um, let's just say my arms were out. Might be like that with my arm up maybe about right there so I can be happy with that I like that idea a lot so what I'm gonna do now and I'm telling you now as I go along with this project 
and I keep going with this series, this this design series. I'm not even going to call it a tutorial at this point. It's it's just a little guidance on how to design. Um, watch me flub up, watch me frog if you want, I don't care. But I'm just going to back out this last uh, row real quick. And I will do a recount of my stitches, but they should be about half. Because I did an increase. So I did my treble crochet, chain one, double, into the first stitch. So um, there's always an extra edge stitch. There's the doubling of the stitch, the double crochet and the chain one. So um, I'm not counting that first treble and the last treble as being so much of the increasing of the roundness of it. So I'm going to back out this last row. And I may use the word round or row interchangeably in this project, just so you know. If I'm talking round or row, it's rows. If I'm saying needle, I'm talking hook, unless I say yarn needle. Um, but I am, I'm so excited about this top. I really am. And no matter what, um, I really don't want to frog this whole thing. I, I want to use it for something somehow. So it may end up getting some fabric. Who knows? Um, right now I'm just in love with my little sweetheart top. So, Okay. That's that, I think, for the night on this. I'm going to frog it and go back to about 256 stitches. I will recount and put my markers back in. Um, and then I'm going to do some rows where it has the corners in it. And um, once I get to the corners, um, get a couple rows in with the corners, I will come back and show you where I've placed those.